Hey, what's up guys? 2019 is in full swing and the next generation of flagship phones is here, starting with the Xiaomi Mi 9. But besides having a brand new Snapdragon chipset, what else does it have going for it? I'm Will for GSI Marina and this is our Xiaomi Mi 9 review. The Xiaomi Mi 9 has a build made of glass on the front and back, just like last year's model, but this time around is Gorilla Glass 6. The back is curved with a mirror-like finish. It tapers down to the aluminum frame, making the phone seem sleek and razor thin. It doesn't feel like a razor though. Since the frame is rounded, the lack of a sharp edge makes it a bit difficult to grip. I would recommend using a case. The screen of the Mi 9 is a 6.4 inch AMOLED with a tall 19.5 by 9 aspect ratio. Like last year, there's a notch cut out in the screen to house the selfie camera, but this time it's a smaller water drop style notch. There's no option to hide it with a black bar. With the 1080p resolution, content looks good on this screen, nice and crisp, with the deep blacks of an AMOLED. The display is also quite color accurate. Maximum brightness is respectable at 430 nits, and up to 620 nits in auto mode in bright conditions. Legibility outdoors in the sun is great. There's support for an always-on display, which has different themes to choose from, and can show you the time and notifications while the phone sleeps. And if you want to take advantage of the AMOLED to save power, you can turn on dark mode to switch all system colors from white to black. Waking up the Mi 9 is easy with the under-display fingerprint reader, new this year. It feels quite fast and responsive. Your other option is face unlock, but you have to set your location to something like India to enable it. It is also fast, but unlike last year, there's no infrared component, so it might not work quite as well as the Mi 8's in the dark. Just as we've seen with other Xiaomi phones, there's no official IP rating on the Mi 9, and there's no rubber seal on the SIM tray, so better be careful around water. And speaking of the tray, there is support for two SIMs here, but there's no microSD slot. You'll have to make do with the 64 or 128 gigs of memory built into the phone. For audio, the Mi 9 has a single bottom firing speaker. Loudness is very good, but not excellent. The output is quite clean and rich sounding though. When I close my eyes, I see you. When I open them, I miss you. Just like last year's model, there's no 3.5mm jack here. You'll have to plug headphones into the USB-C port with a dongle. Audio quality is good, with above average loudness and very good clarity. The Mi 9's interface is Xiaomi's custom Mi UI 10 over Android 9 Pie. It offers some features that are a bit different from stock Android. Gesture navigation is quite simple to use similar to the style made popular on iOS. There's no app drawer, so everything is kept on the home screen. Going left takes you to the app vault that gives you quick access to commonly used apps, notes, and news. Since the phone has an IR blaster, you can use it to control appliances through the Mi Remote app. And there's a dedicated button which can launch Google Assistant on the international version of the phone. You can even map it to other functions, but only ones chosen from a predefined list. The Mi 9 is the first phone we've seen with the newest Snapdragon 855 chipset, which is built on a 7 nanometer process. Together with 6 gigs of RAM, performance is just as you would expect. Awesome! It's among the best available for Android, and also runs cooler than Huawei's Karen 980. But where it shines is in graphics performance. With this new Adreno 640, it dominates the Android competition. Battery life on the Mi 9 is great. It scored an endurance rating of 91 hours in our proprietary tests a minor improvement over last year's model. Xiaomi's fast charging called Charge Turbo is supported here, but unfortunately the 27 watt charger doesn't come in the box. The one you get instead should be 18 watts, and we got from 0 to around 45% with it in 30 minutes. If you do opt to buy the bigger brick, you'll be able to get from 0 to 70% charge in the same amount of time. Nice! The Charge Turbo brick comes bundled together with a 20 watt wireless charging pad. With this, we were able to get from 0 to 30% in half an hour. The Mi 9 introduces a triple camera setup to the Mi lineup. There's a 12 megapixel telephoto camera at the top, the large 48 megapixel main camera in the middle, and at the bottom, a 16 megapixel ultra wide camera. None of these have OIS. The main camera doesn't save photos in 48 megapixels. It uses a quad bayer filter and pixel binning, so the default output is 12 megapixels. You can opt to shoot a 48 megapixel photo if you use pro mode, but the results are rather soft and noisy. In daylight, the 12 megapixel shots from the main cam look great, totally flagship grade. There's plenty of detail, impressive dynamic range, low noise, and overall very nice rendition. Zoomed images from the telephoto look great too. The noise is low, 
Colors are lively and accurate, there's plenty of detail, and dynamic range is equally impressive. Here's a 16 megapixel shot from the ultra wide cam, also quite nice. The level of detail may not be as high, but the color rendition is excellent, noise levels are tolerable, and the dynamic range is superb. You don't see much of the barrel distortion typical of an ultra wide, thanks to the distortion correction. Turning this off will get you a little more detail around the edges at the expense of some bent buildings and things. The Mi 9's portrait mode uses the telephoto by default and gives you a slider to choose the amount of blur. The subject separation is among the best we've seen, and the defocused background looks quite nice. In low light, shots with a main cam look fine, with true to life colors, but because there's no OIS, the shutter speed is restricted and the image is darker than we'd like. In addition, the aggressive noise reduction smears some of the fine detail. Wide angle shots don't look great, with the same aggressive noise reduction but an even darker exposure. There's no telephoto option at night. Zoom is done digitally. You can get some better quality in low light if you turn on night mode. It brings out more detail while restoring the highlights and shadows, and it works a bit faster than the version on Huawei's phones. The Mi 9 selfie cam is 20 megapixels at f2.2, and focus is fixed. You need to hold the phone rather close to the subject to be in the sharpest focus. But if you get it right, the level of detail is quite amazing. The colors are nice too, and dynamic range is good for a selfie cam. Videos can be captured in up to 4K at 60fps. 4K videos from the main cam are sharp and detailed, with pleasant colors and low noise. Dynamic range is pretty decent too. There is no option to shoot through the telephoto cam, but you can take an ultra-wide video. These are softer and less detailed, but the color rendition is still quite nice. Electronic stabilization is available to smooth out your videos, but only in 30fps, not 60. You do get a bit narrower field of view if you use it. So that's the Xiaomi Mi 9. It's a pretty compelling package. You've got the newest Snapdragon 855, a top-notch OLED screen, great camera, excellent battery life and blazing fast charging. What else could you want? Well, there are a few things like OIS on the camera, waterproofing, a headphone jack and expandable storage. But at this price, right around 500 euros, it's pretty hard to complain. Now all that said, if you already have a Mi 8, the upgrades over last year aren't that huge and it probably wouldn't be worth switching over. But for everyone else, the Mi 9 has some killer specs at a great price and definitely deserves our recommendation. Thanks for watching guys. If you'd like to check out the full test findings of the Mi 9 or compare it to some other phones, you're welcome to stop by gsmarina.com. We'll throw a link down in the description below. See ya!